so this is the part where I say, you're in my little home studio. <laughs> where are we located? We're located in Regent Park. Nice. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my home studio. It's a, a one bedroom condo with my wife uh, that we converted half of into a studio because clearly Toronto is very expensive when it comes to getting artist space to create. So my wife was kind enough to <laughs> offer to, uh, actually she converted herself. Uh, I was actually sleeping one, one day I woke up and she's like, come, 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 come see, come see what I did in the living room. And this used to be a dining area. We used to actually have a, a dining table here, which is, um, so what happens when I started painting, uh, I was so dis I won't say disorganized. I, I, it was still a hobby, so I didn't at the time invest in anything. So we just had uh, I put one. I put used to put the canvases, and they were quite small at the time. They were you know probably about a quarter of this painting. And I'll put the canvas on the chair, and I'll take another chair and sit in front of it, and I will paint. And all my painting, uh, all my paints and my brushes, and everything was just on the on the dinner table, and it was it was just a mess. It was a complete mess, and we couldn't we couldn't have people over anymore because we had to find places you know, to put all the art uh, and all the you know, all the stuff. So one day she came and she said, hey, "Listen, we don't really need this table. We 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 have people over, but we barely people have have people over to have dinner parties." So. How about we convert um, the dining area into your studio? And I mean, we had that talk before and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And then one day I woke up and she had converted the whole place. Oh, wow. You know, she took the table away and she, you know, she bought me um, an easel, which is actually this same easel that I'm using. You know, I haven't, mm. I haven't <laughs> changed the easel. It's, it's a sentimental value to me, you know, this something my wife bought for me um, at the beginning of my artistic journey. So it's, you know, it has, it has a huge meaning to me, so I've kept it and it's, it's done me well. You know, it's fallen apart several times by my handyman, you know. Uh, you know, you, there's always a uh, Gorilla Glue and tools that you can use to fix it. It's not completely broken, so I'm a firm believer, hey, if you ain't broke, no, don't, don't fix it, don't buy a new one, you know. We, we live in a society where we gotta get everything new. It's like, oh, there's a new easel, yeah, let's get that one, no. Uh, if it's not, uh, I'm not a believer in that, so I've kind of stuck with it and had it for all these years, and it's done me well. And yeah, so you know, it's the beauty about having a home studio or painting from home uh, is you get to do it at any time you want. Mm -hmm. You get to wake up at any time. And you don't even need to be dressed. And that's the honest truth, you know? <laughs> Let's, I'll be candid. I love to paint in my boxers and a t-shirt. It is the most comfortable <laughs> to ever paint. And because, you know, you know, you're in your home, no one really cares, right? Well, you got some big windows here, so you might be putting on a show and not even... <laughs> well, not at all, because also there's a lot of uh, what I like to call privacy gla um, grass, which is a nice... Uh, you can't really see it, but shelters me from anybody seeing into my home. So uh, I, I love the grass. It's, uh, it's amazing. But also the natural light in here um, definitely helps. I recently have... I had been painting for years, um, with soft light okay. um, and after a while I started noticing I wasn't seeing the things I was looking for in terms of uh, the detail and being able to see certain details and certain areas of the painting um, with the soft lights I actually had to switch to uh, fluorescent which is you know the best when you're creating works like this so it's been it's been fun just to go back, you brought up something that just in my endeavors now with talking to different artists that I find so crucial and that support. Um, I know you're coming from like a corporate background, but mm -hmm. was that something, did you always have that support? Like this, uh, this, is, your, this is your career now. That's right, second, career. Second, career, second career, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, second career. So, um, Sometimes not everyone gets that support, and uh, we'll just maybe you tell us what are, what was the support situation for you in this in this new creative endeavor. Um, the support was amazing. 
Mm. You know, I'll be honest with you. And that support mainly came from my wife. Yeah, clearly. Um, and that's, that's the thing about having a good partner, mm. you know. Um, and I'm blessed with one. And it's sometimes it's very hard for some people, some partners, to really see uh, the potential in, in their significant other. Mm -hmm. And also being able to allow them to, to fly, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you gotta, you're, 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 you know, my opinion is, you know, you know, I'm blessed, but my opinion is you gotta have, your partner gotta be your biggest cheerleader. Yes. Right, I'm, I'm my wife's biggest cheerleader. She's mine, but she's also my biggest critic. You know, people tell me, "Oh, Benny," and she says it's a lot. This is her words, not mine. <laughs> she says it's a lot. You know, people tell you all the time, "Oh, how great you are! Your work is amazing." You know, um, you need someone to balance that. You know, you need someone to tell you, "Hey." This is, for lack of a better word, shit, and you need to improve. This is not you, and you can be better than this, and, you know, uh, and just kind of push you. Um, not bring you down, but critique your work in a way that you can actually stop, look back, and say, you know what, You're absolutely right, mm -hmm. you know? Um, or sometimes when I say, because I'm, you know, I'm a perfectionist in some ways, and I'll look at a painting while I'm working on it, and I'm like, oh, damn, I hate this painting. Mm -hmm. This is BS. I hate this. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to continue this. It's like, no, you're halfway through the painting. Give it some time, right? You say this all the time, but then after you're done, you're like, yeah, it's great. No, but you know, you <laughs> gotta give it. So you know, having that person, um, that's part of also something I love. You know, working from home is, you know, she she's normally here, and she's watching TV, reading a book, or doing her own thing. Uh, she's sometimes, you know, on the couch and watching me paint and, and uh, she's able to kind of motivate me and boost me, right, mm -hmm. which is key. Um, but the, the, the encouragement came um, because, you know, it, for, for some people that don't know, um, it, I'll, I'll kind of just go over real quick. Mm -hmm. She was the original reason I actually discovered my talent. Oh, wow. um, she and her mother. I've said it a lot in you know, interviews and, and things like that, but I, I, you know, there's, I can, I'll keep on saying it because uh, it's the truth one and it's important for people to know that you might not even see your talent in yourself. Mm. It could be a complete stranger or it could be someone very close to you. Um, and it's important to embrace it and be humble about it also. You don't, you don't have to be the one that discovers exactly what you're good at. Someone can tell you mm -hmm. and show you, hey, did you know you're good at this? And kind of you know, highlight what you're good at. And um, so it was, it was Christmas, 2014 Christmas. Um, and uh, we were in France. Um, she's French. So we went back home um, to see her family. And, you know, I come from a a Christian background. Um, so when Christmas to us is very, uh, you know, it's Jesus' birthday, right? So, <laughs> so, you know, gifts is not really a big thing because... You're celebrating life. We're celebrating, yeah, exactly, right? And uh, I think the way, you know, my parents, my, my, my mother raised us and my parents raised us is, was more about family and uh, really spending time okay, yeah. uh, than not necessarily gifts. So, you know, I wasn't, we weren't raised in the gift culture of Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean I'm against it. However, you know, her family, they very much love, uh, you know, Christmas. Christmas is huge for them. So, you know, they, they, you know, they buy little gifts and stuff and that have meanings. And uh, I think it was like our first year of our relationship or, yeah, first, first year and a half, something like that. And I remember uh, they didn't want to buy something too uh, extravagant. extravagant. Yeah. Was that because they weren't sure where this is going, or if it's the first year that that's understood? You know, I don't even know. I think it was more um, they don't, they're not really into extravagant okay. gifts per se. They're into meaningful gifts. Oh, okay. uh, so that's a lot better. Anyway. Yes. So it's uh, you know, so for for them it was like oh I think she said something to her mom and from what she I recall her telling me it was like yeah he's kind of creative because um, before we moved in here I did a, a painting of Fela Kuti. Yeah. Uh, was it a painting? It was a drawing with an acrylic pen on a canvas, and it was here in front of our, our dining table. And I remember, uh, you know, the mom said, oh, "Okay, yeah, we'll get him some some acrylic paint mm -hmm. for Christmas." So it's Christmas Day, and uh, you know, this is presented to me, and uh, I'm like, "Okay, 
this, this is quite this is quite nice. <laughs> it's very nice, you know. And and you know, I was raised, in, you know, to be very humble and yeah. be appreciative, and you know, I was, I was very it's thankful. The that counts. Exactly, right? I mean, they didn't need to get me anything. Let's be honest, yeah. right? Uh, I wasn't expecting anything, so that's another thing. I was expecting anything from it, um, but I got this acrylic paint, and I was like, oh, this is nice. I, when I definitely get back. To uh, to Toronto, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint a nice you know use the paint and uh, the paint and create something quite nice. I came back and uh, Super Bowl 2015, I painted my first my very first paint, uh, portrait. And, I, and the reason I painted portraits is really because I, I used to sketch a little bit. Um, so I wouldn't say I, I've been a creative all my life. Okay. My father is a creative. Uh, uh, so it's kind of in the family. However, I've never painted. So, and I think it's important for people to understand that sketching and painting are two different things. Mm -hmm. Because holding a brush, exactly like what I'm doing right now, is one of the toughest things to do if you don't have the precision and you have shaky hands. <laughs> so, you know, that's something I never did. However, you know, with a, with a pencil or a pen, it's quite, issue, quite easy, you know, you're mm -hmm. really gripping it and you know, going at it. Plus you've been doing that motion your whole life. Whole life, exactly. You know, as a kid, you first start with, yeah. you know, a pencil. So, um, you know, it became a thing where, as, as, as a hobby, I was mentioning, you know, like I'm, I'm painting in, you know, in the middle of, a, of our living room and on the dinner table. And you know, so it was really a passion and a hobby for me when I first started because I'll come back from work. This is, I was in corporate, I was in digital marketing mm -hmm. and uh, come back from work. And the first thing I do when we go home was paint. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with it because it took me to a certain place and I, I was seeing things that I was shocked that I was creating, right? I think that's another thing is um, when you start to see how you know the 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 results of uh, of your labor mm -hmm. of you creating with your hands it it triggers something in the brain so i was really excited about that and and over time you know my wife's like you know you you, you can do this you can do this and I remember she applied for my first art show wow i was actually liberty village art crawl so it wasn't even an art show, it was an art crawl, it was a market, art market, if you don't call it that, yeah. um, in Liberty Village. And I was so, and she told me after work, she's like, oh, guess what? I applied for, for this for you and you accepted. I'm like, no way. It's like, yeah, you know, more people are gonna see your work now. The world can see your work. Because before that, it was just Instagram. I was only, and I didn't even have many followers on Instagram at the time. I think it was probably like 2000. Uh, and, and at that time, I mean, 2000 being just a regular person was something. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, it, it wasn't like... You're gonna dominate the world. Exactly, <laughs> you know, I was just putting stuff, but oh, get, look at the stuff I'm doing at home, you know, there's this a lot of excitement I'm getting with my, you know, with this paint and, and things like that. And, uh, and that was the first time, and you know, you, you know I'm seeing my, my partner who was, you know, coming, and she's like, you know, you can really do this. You can actually make this, and continue making this into a huge career, so. The support was there, and I'm very lucky to have that, have that support, and I'm, I'm grateful, you know, I'm very grateful for being blessed with my wife and being blessed with a person that understands uh, and is able to, um, and wants to see succeed. me succeed, right? That's key. That's super key. So you, you mentioned uh, two things, but one that jumps out. Uh, you said that... Uh, your family is also, your dad is also creative? Yes, he is. Okay, do you have any siblings? I have four siblings. And are they all, do they all have some kind of creative or did you just soak up everyone's that? No, know. so they're, they're, they're <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, uh, there are two of us really technically that are uh, very creative. Okay. Um, he, however, doesn't pursue any of his. Okay. Um, he used to, my, my older brother, Toby, he used to, um, draw manga and okay. uh, merely comic comic book characters yeah but he never really pursued it um, for his own life. yeah okay. and also you know we come from my father is Nigerian and my mom's Bayesian oh, okay. we were all born and raised in Nigeria uh, so it's kind of you know from the Nigerian culture unfortunately arts is not a big thing mm -hmm. um, and you know it's pretty sad I don't know why because we're a very creative culture 
and but arts is not something that a huge emphasis is put on you know they put emphasis on what we what they call quote unquote secure jobs mm. or secure careers whether it may be uh you know being a lawyer doctor uh, uh an accountant all these different uh, specific uh Some careers jobs. yes <laughs> you know the white collar the, the white collar jobs yeah. that um and I think it's, it's, it's mainly to create, the idea is to create a life for yourself in terms of stability. But we're seeing now that that's kind of false because you, know, you can go to school and study whatever you study. If you're not happy, you're gonna follow your passion. If that's not really your calling, it's gonna change. So, however, my dad, speaking of my dad, he's, uh, he's what I would call a closet artist <laughs> meaning he does not show his work um, I would never show his work <laughs> so uh, it's it's quite a, you know I've, I've tried to convince him several times and uh, to try and show his work but he's not comfortable and that's completely fine you know there are a lot of artists that are like that mm -hmm. right whether young or old there are a lot of artists that are not comfortable with showing their work for whatever reason and he's one of those. However, you know, when I started painting and discovered this, you know, the relationship between myself and my father completely changed because he realized that, you know, his son actually is following the path of what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so he's kind of uh, vicariously living through me, which is quite amazing. Yeah. So, but what's interesting is that, you know, I, for example, a couple of days ago, I kind of sent this, uh, sent a message with time lapse of this painting I was doing and this image and uh, my mom is like oh wow that's amazing this is that's, that, that, oh my gosh God bless you with hands <laughs> my dad is like oh you know you can change one color here you can put a color there and I'm like you know there's a contrast between the two responses <laughs> you know it, but it's amazing because he, he he you know he really he's really into it and I, and I love that is that the, the fact that my father can see me pursue this and um, and make it into a career, yeah. something that you know I'm sure in his mind he's never told me you know he's never confirmed this for sure, but I'm sure it's something that he wanted to do, mm -hmm. but unfortunately you know he couldn't. So it's really amazing to see that his you know one of his kids is able to do that. Picked up the mantle. That's right. It's, you know I'm I'm sure he's he says he's proud. So I'm, I, and I know that he is. I'm sure he's really happy to really see that um, someone has been able to carry that, and I've been able to really utilize it and. Mm -hmm. and show the the beauty also in what we do and, and who we are because that's what I capture is blackness mm. right um. so that's a that's an interesting thing uh, that I noticed with your work basically an afrocentric afrocentric art but then I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Let me rephrase. Say it any way you want to say it. <laughs> Which is so amazing. Okay, your art is black women. That's right. But they're not black. But right away I can tell they're black. That's right. So explain some uh, to me how did that come about? Like, I know these women that you have right now in the studio and the one that you're working on, mm -hmm. they're black. Mm -hmm. But their skin is not. That's right. So how did we get to that point? Um, that's a good question. So the honest answer to this question is um, when I first got the acrylic paint for Christmas, mm -hmm. it was, you know, the funny thing, I don't even have the, tr the, the tray anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have any more paintings from that. But it, it, was, it came with a, an array of colors. Okay. And my idea was to use as many colors, all the colors, you know, the, that was the idea, use all the colors in this and paint something. And so when I started, it was just really just playing around with, with color and just experimenting and just, uh, you know, laying paint on canvas. Um, and I wasn't using a brush, I was using a, a palette knife, which, you know, the funny thing is, the palette knife is now stuck to 
to zoom in on. Stock the table. Stock the table. It's a chunk of paint now. Um, but I, I was using a pile of knives. So it was really just you know playing around with paint on canvas, and that feeling was also amazing. Just going at it. Um, but then I, I started thinking, you know, what is the right approach to art as an outsider coming in? Um, so I want to answer this question. I didn't go to art school. I have no art history knowledge. I have n nothing. This is all self-taught, self-learned. Um, so I decided to find out, th look for things that an other artist that would inspire me. And I, I discovered an artist named Nelly Francois. Um, she's from France. And she, her use of color is just amazing. I mean, she, and she uses a pala knife, which is also another reason why I started using a pala knife. And, uh, and Voca. But Voki uses brushes. So I, but just the use of color in painting portraits is what really inspired me. So I said, you know, let me find my own uh, path. path and my own style. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I used their work as practice. However, it was unlocking things within my, uh, my creative mind that I didn't even know. So over time, and as I, as I was creating and using all these different colors, when I was going into the art store to buy supplies, um, because of course I used all the paint, so <laughs> I needed to buy new and uh, new paints, and I would go in there and I'll see new colors, and I'll just pick, you know, and it's just whatever my creative mind thinks, I will just go, and none of this was ever planned, so I'm just picking all these different paints, and coming back and creating this these portraits, and uh, it was before painting black women, I was painting celebrities. My first collection. Is, is mainly black celebrities, black icons, Muhammad Ali, um, um, Mandela, uh, Nina Simone, uh, Tupac, Biggie. It was all these different icons I was painting. And uh, I just started using a color palette that I felt was inspiring me at the time, which was a, a lot of yellow. Uh, none of them are actually here, the old work is not here, but um, a lot of yellow, a lot of blue, a lot of uh, uh, orange, red, lavender, purple, just a mix of colors together. And I create, that was like my first color palette of my work. Mm -hmm. And I would just keep on creating with that because it was, I had finally found something, a color palette that worked for me that wasn't similar to what was really out there from other artists. And it was different from Nelly's work. It was different from Voca's work. Uh, so I just kind of ran with that. I kept on going with that. Uh, so I, 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 to this day, I still fully believe. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> That's <laughs> right? good though. Right? <laughs> I am just going with whatever my creative mind says, I do. Because I've noticed that when I don't, it's forced mm. and I fail in a sense. Yeah. So I started realizing, so if that's the case, then I need to stop forcing it, right? So, um, so for example, why did I stop painting black women? Mm -hmm. The honest truth was, was, it was, I think, November of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, this was around the, the election, the U.S. election that time. Um, 2016, so that's Trump. That's, yeah, that was Trump-Hillary time. And uh, I was working on... Um, it was right, I also did a show that year, in, in that October, I, I also did a show at Daniel Spectrum, it was my second show, um, which was called uh, We're Forever uh, Portraits. Uh, and it was, you know, it, was, it was the same thing, it was African, um, black legends, Michael Jackson, I mean, the whole ray, and it was a packed event. Um, you know, it was a lot of people came through. I think it was my biggest show till date at that time. People loved it. Um, however, none of those paintings sold. None of them sold, right? And I started to think to myself, well, um, that's not a failure because I've been able to show my work to the world and the community that I had never been, I never, never been able to pull that, that crowd. Um, but I was disappointed, right? And I remember when I sat down with my wife, I was like, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that you, know, you, paint, you paint black celebrities and you think people will jump on it, mm. right? Because, you know, some of the, the other work was selling prior to that. And then all of a sudden I do a show. And you no, know, the show was really, what can I paint that will sell? What can I paint that will put money in my pocket? <laughs> so the idea behind it was money wasn't necessarily creativity. Okay. Right? Money will always come. But when you force the creativity and you're forcing something that's not natural, that creates the problem. So moving forward, um, 
so she, you know, she said, you know, you really, if you look at your collection and you look at, you know, um, the subjects that you paint, you're really good at capturing black women. And I was like, you know, that's true. She's like, why don't you just keep on painting black women? And don't, uh, not celebrities, just paint regular black women. And I said, I think to myself, and I was like, you know what? I'll, no, I'll let it, I'll sit on that. And you know, thought about it for a while, and I, I did the first piece, which was, it was a, a follow on Instagram, and she was wearing, a, a Nigerian girl, she was wearing a, a very beautiful red head wrap. Uh, I mean, the very playful uh, pose, she was sticking out her tongue. And I painted that, and people loved it, mm. you know. And I think it was just capturing that moment of the beauty of the head wrap. And uh, I, I remember showing her brother that Christmas, uh, my brother-in-law, and he's like, you know, you're really, you're really amazing at painting black women. And I was like, okay, now it's twice I'm hearing this. Um, so I think I'm gonna stick to what I'm really good at, which is, you know, I'm perfected, right? So, you know, pick a subject and perfect it. And then and as I, I was started thinking about the subjects that I was gonna paint um, before I found this collection, which I'm gonna talk about, is something dawned on me and I, because it was hard for me to find uh, black, so when I did a search, I was searching for black women in contemporary art, you know, black subjects. Okay. And what was funny was, there really isn't. <laughs> that's what right? I was laughing. And I was like, this is crazy. So, you know, you, you, you type in um, female portraits on Google, and it's, it's all white subjects, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm looking for, I want to paint black women, but you can't find subjects to paint. So I was like, there is a void. You know, there is this void in there that there's a lack of representation and inclusion in the subjects of the art. Yeah. Um, forget about the artists. We're not even talking about, you know, artists and re representation or what it means for whether, you know, black female artists or uh, um, black male artists in the game. But I'm talking about subjects, what is being painted. Uh, so I was like, you know what, this is it. This is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to do. And all these things, you know, they come to you just like that. It's not moments. You know, it's, it's not something you're like, yeah, I had this genius idea. No, it's not. It's just, you know, it just comes on. And it's based on conversation, right? And so I decided, you know, I'm going to, because I loved the idea of the head wrap, so I'm like, I'm going to continue the head wrap. And I found this company, um, by chance, uh, Rap Life. Okay. And, uh, and you know, coincidentally, the, the owner of the company is Nigerian, and she had one of these wonderful stories about, you know, she was a bartender, and she came up with this idea of um, really re 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 revigorating and uh, bringing back, uh, bringing into, into the culture again, head wraps. Mm. And so she created this head wrap company. Wow. And she's, I mean, she's doing phenomenal. She's doing very is well. Is she based out of Toronto? Or? Based out of New York. Oh, New York? Okay. Yeah, based out of New York. And uh, uh, her name is Inanna uh, Inan Stella. Okay. Yeah. And um, you know what, what was crazy was I went to a website and I started checking out the images and the marketing and the photography behind everything was just I mean top notch. Mm. You know. So I took the pictures and I started painting the head wrap series, which. Pretty much all gone. <laughs> um, I think so. This is part of the hair wrap series, but this is an older version, and, and this is quite larger. But I painted, I painted her. I painted a, a bunch of other subjects, and it was one after the other. I think I started with her, and then they were large. They were about this size, forty by sixty, and I was only painting portraits till just just the neck level. So it was just the head, okay. right? So you have this huge piece of, of you know beautiful eccentric head wraps with details and people just love it mm -hmm. so i said oh, okay let's do another one and i did another one and i was like okay let's do another one again and i just had pumping all this work out i think i pumped about seven pieces seven head wraps okay. six seven head wraps and um while i was doing it the name came to me adelani Mm -hmm. Adelani is Yoruba because um, I'm Yoruba. My, my father is from the Yoruba tribe in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, Adelani means you own the crown. And I looked at the head wrap as a crown that is sitting on these beautiful subjects. Mm -hmm. And I named every single painting after the word queen in an African language or an actual African queen. Like Makeda, um, Kendake, uh, the word Nana is royalty in, uh, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you know, I picked all these different ways to educate um, the public at the same time on the collection. So not just uh, are these beautiful paintings, but the name, the names behind these paintings are people you should know, There's right? Stories There's stories behind them. You know, warrior princesses like Aminatu. You know, there, there should be a movie right now mm -hmm. done on Aminatu. I mean, she was one of the, you know, strongest, most interesting um, female African warriors that, in my opinion, ever existed, right? <laughs> um, I don't think I'll get to it because we're gonna get sidetracked, but, um, so, you know, those, those are, those are, you know, it was very informative, and I put that out there, and, you know, people were like, oh, wow. And, and the thing about it, it and it's because I'm not, I didn't go to school for this. I can't really talk about art the way someone that went to art school can talk about art. Mm -hmm. So I can only talk about it the way that I know how to. So to me, it was, you know, that was to, you know, I just like, you know, talking about it, you know, and explaining it to the public the way that felt comfortable also. And I don't want to be one of those guys that comes in here and tries to throw big words around and, <laughs> you know, tries to make you feel like, oh yeah, I'm one of these artsy types. No, I have no clue exactly what I'm doing, right? So, you know, things started growing and, and I decided to continue on the path, but update and let my creative, my creative mind update me on when, no, now it's time to change your style. Now it's time to evolve and let it be a natural process. So, you know, I'll be introducing colors and you would see it, it change from the color palette with the celebrities to the, this color palette. And then from this color palette, it evolved to, you know, you know, to other, I think one more. No, actually after this, there was a lot of yellow at first with this style and then I removed the yellow. And that's what you see with this and this one. And this was based on my, uh, my, my last show called Colorblind. Mm -hmm. So from this one, I realized, this is, this is nice, but I wanna do something different. I, I, I no longer just wanna keep it, you know, where I'm, I'm only painting, you know, just below the neck, just below the neck mm -hmm. right? Um, I want to include more fabric. I want to include more texture and more detail to the work. So, so you know, the, the evolution now has, you know, has changed from the color palettes of what I used to um, a monochromatic gray, which for the record, since I'll just move this to the side a little bit. So this is what the gray now, the, the new style kind of looks like. So now we're getting into also not just the the facial change, but now there's background color. And That's right. Actually, in addition to background color, there's well background items like the leaves on this one and, and the one you're working on currently. So this is all just a natural evolution. Evolution. Work. That's right. So I, after the show, so colorblind was I, I would say to date my. Um, most successful exhibit. Um, that, that whole uh, you were a colorblind. I was there. That's for right. The two days. Yeah. And that was. I don't mean to cut you off here, but that was such an amazing event. Like. Thank uh, you. That was. Uh, I just like how everything was presented. I like the the vibe. I like the the people that attracted that were attracted to to coming. And mm -hmm. Even the next day. Um, when you uh, the artist talk yeah that was that was also really good because I, I saw some artists artists in the crowd asking yes. questions that's right um, and um, I'm, I'm going to keep my I want to make sure I'm saying this right Ashley McKenzie Barnes yes Ashley McKenzie Barnes that's amazing right amazing too hopefully one day I'll, I'll get to get her on here amazing curator by the way I yeah. mean this this woman is doing some so I'm making some big moves in the city, and that's why I really wanted to work around the project. Yeah. So with Colorblind, it was you know my most su successful show mm -hmm. in terms of um, um, not just um, uh, financial success, but also um, exposure. 
So, you know, we, we, for that, it was a two day event. Um, Cause unfortunately I don't, I don't do, uh, I'm not, I, I'm not represented by anybody. <laughs> I'm not I'm represented by a gallery. So, you know, all of this was uh, funded by the private sector with my connection with private sector like Daniels and uh, Carm Collective and CBC and other ventures that, you know, decided to sponsor this, this art event. Uh, it was a two day event. So it was more of a, one day was a, the, the, was a opening and then there was the artist talk, which worked very well because, you know, people were still able to view the work online. That's, you know, we live in a digital age. So it's amazing. Um, but, you know, we, based on that show, not only did I, you know, meet yourself and met some other people, you know, including Tracy Melshaw from eTalk. And, uh, you know, eTalk is one of the biggest syndicated entertainment talk shows in Canada. And she came over and she actually interviewed me in my studio at home and, uh, and it, it went pretty much nationally across the country, syndicated. And it, it, it's quite amazing when, you know, people start to call you and they buy out your old collection. You know, there's nothing better than that, right? So it, it, was, it was a very humbling and great feeling at the same time. Um, but then after the show, I felt, you know, I, I, I need to do something a little bit different with my work in terms of um, the quality and, and what it looks like. Because, you, you know, between Adelani and Colorblind and the Women of Color Collection, you know, all of them have a very simple white background, and a lot of them are you no know, really you no know, just neck length or shoulder length. So I wanted to find how can I make you know how can I go bigger in terms of you know capturing more of the subject, in, including you know bust level or waist level or full length, and and how can I you know add things to the background of the work. Um, so I, I and I came this idea had been something that was. Um, sitting on my mind for, for, for a while in terms of uh, plants in the back to symbolize growth mm. um, and the growth of the female um, fight, especially the black female fight. When you think about it, um, we have more black women who are graduating from college and university, more black women in the workforce, more, more black girls getting educated. Now, even in Africa, we're looking at you know a lot of families seeing the importance of the, 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 the female, the, the, the daughter, right? Um, so it's you know that growth, and we can see more, of course. But I wanted to have something in there in here that symbolizes that, and that's what the the, the plants in the background do. And at the same time, I wanted to also still incorporate the head wraps series into these pieces. Um, so I started creating this pretty much February of this year. February of 2020, I started creating this new collection. Um, it did start like, I will say December, I did a small little um, creation of the work uh, to see if the idea itself will work. And the thing about small pieces is because all my brushes are pretty much, they're pretty big. Uh, for you know, because I, I paint big works, I couldn't really get all the details looking for, but I got you know the premise of what I was trying to see, and I, I saw that okay, this definitely works. <laughs> so I started painting in February, and I mean, like I said, I let my creativity take take its course. So the you know the the gray monochromatic subject itself. So what is this? I took all the color from the subject's faces mm -hmm. and put that into the clothing of what they were in uh, and get you know, make them more detailed and really you know, keep, keep that color still in there. Because the, the reason people really love my work is the, the power of color, mm -hmm. right? And how the color draws you in. Because so vibrant. Yes, very vibrant. You walk into any place, any place where you see a Benny Bing, I guarantee you, subconsciously, you're not even going to know you're doing this. Your eyes yeah. go into towards that painting. Mm -hmm. It's just the philosophy of colors. It's just the way it works. So I wanted to still keep that idea and that, that feeling behind the work, but at the same time, uh, come up with something unique and you know, this ended up being what, what I released as you know, the latest collection, which is the Bloom collection. Mm -hmm. um, so Bloom to, to blossom. Um, and I think that's, what we, that's how we need to look at female, black females and black female subjects is, uh, you know, uh, plants blossoming, the beauty of them. Uh, and really portray, you see the thing about it is when you look at media and you look at um, the way black women and the black body is portrayed. 
it's in a very negative light, majority of the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do we change that narrative, right? Uh, you, you need to start telling better stories, different stories to counter the BS that is out there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and another thing that, you know, always made me think is, you know, I, I'm not, I haven't been blessed with any kids yet, but eventually, you know, when I do have kids and if I do have a, a young black girl, you know, what kind of world do I want her growing up in? Right? What type of environment uh, do I hope to uh, do I hope to raise her in? And what is my job in that? What's my role in that apart from raising her? But what can I do? And you know, the importance is having little girls perceive themselves portrayed in a very regal, powerful, empowering way. It speaks volumes. You know, self-esteem we're looking at these days is very low among kids. In general, you know, because of social media, because of phones, whatever the case is, um, because of lack of, you know, empowerment in within the household. You know, there's several factors that you can say, but if we know that self-esteem is low across the board, what does self-esteem look like for little black girls? Negative. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how do you how do you change that? Um, that's that that's pretty much my the part of my task is to retell the story and i'm only just an instrument because i'm not a woman i'm not a black woman i've never worked a, a day in a black woman's shoes i don't i'll never know what it, it feels like yeah. however i can be an instrument that can help change the narrative of how black women see themselves and give them that courage yeah. To also because when you have if you don't have if you have low self esteem think about it I mean I'll just dwell on this a little bit because it's very important about my work mm -hmm. well if you have low self esteem you can't demand equity no. you can't sit at that table right you could but you won't say anything yeah. you, you know because you never open your mouth your voice will never be heard right so we want to be able to raise strong black girls in, the, in, in a society that can sit at, that can demand want to sit at that table sit at the table and demand what they want demand the equity um, so that's a huge part of, of, of why I, I do what I do and you know there are people that collect my work and tell me stories about why they buy the work and a lot of them you know turn out to be you know, they buying it so their kids can have a very positive view of themselves you know, and that to me, that is, that, that, that's what I take home. Mm -hmm. That is the best part of when I'm painting is I know that, you know, there is somebody, could be a young black girl or even a woman, a black woman that can see this, who is struggling to see herself as beautiful. Mm -hmm. And look at this and say, thank you. I feel, you know, I feel good mm -hmm. and improve the way she perceives herself. That's important. That is key. You know, it's key for me. Not, not only perceives, but then how she walks. How well, she that's right, how she carries herself. Mm -hmm. yeah. The conversations that she's now willing to engage in and not engage in. Exactly. Um, yeah, that, that's powerful. That, that's amazing. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, so these are, you know, these are some of the things. Uh, so, so hence, that's the reason to answer the question. That, that's the reason why uh, it, it's, it's kind of evolved, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll be, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I, I, I let my creative mind do what it needs to do mm -hmm. and I follow along. Um, because anything else would, to me is fake or forced. Yeah, I, I like that you're saying that and I hope everyone that's watching understands the importance of being authentic and allowing yourself to grow like if i correct me if i'm wrong you started we'll say later on like you didn't you like you said you didn't go to school for this you got a painting set as a gift and took advantage of that then noticed okay i'm really good at this and it's it's a natural um progression progression that's of, right of, of work that's right you wake up and the next the, that very moment i can i have this ability but you're allowing yourself to grow, which is, which is amazing. And you're actually allowing yourself to, to adapt, change, you're open to change. And I was speaking with another artist uh, and they kind of said something similar that they go where the art kind of takes them. That's right. Where the spirit takes them. Yeah. Um, and you kind of mentioned it earlier too with, um, well, this is a little bit different, but 
you had the, the situation where none of the paintings sold. Yeah. But the moment you started painting, almost for yourself to a degree, uh, things started to take off. Yeah. And now you're painting authentically Benny Benny work. So that, that's amazing. And I think a lot of people who see your work should keep in mind that you're, you're still evolving and you're allowing yourself to grow into, into the artist that you'll continue to become, I guess. So. That's right. And, and, and you know, to be honest with you, um, let's, let's you know, go back to that question about you know, painting for money and, mm -hmm. um, cr and you know, creatively creating things. Um, see, the thing is, every artist wants to make money. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think I've ever met an artist that says, oh, you know, I don't want to make money. I just really love what I'm doing. Oh, don't get me wrong. There are some people that might be like that, but that's not the majority. Every artist wants to be able to sell their work. They want to be successful. Um, however, there's this uh, stigma. Um, I don't know if it's a stigma, but it's a, it's a stupid mindset of uh, the starving artist. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. No. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm, a very, I'm, I'm a very powerful believer in the power of your tongue and how you think is how you are, mm -hmm. right? There's a saying, um, as you think, so shall it be, right? And what you say will definitely impact what you do. So if you say you're a starving artist, you're going to be a starving artist, What's that? guaranteed. <laughs> there is no doubt about it, you will starve. However, if you decide to take a mindset of being successful with what you do and whatever it is that you touch, you will be successful. Of course, nothing comes easy. It's all hard work, right? But for me, the idea of so, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. You know, I mentor um, some other artists. I have mentors of my own, that guys that, that mentored me, and I, I, I do the same and return the favor and mentor other artists and talk to them about the practice and things they can do. And of course, my journey is not going to be the same as yours, right? Um, and your journey is not going to be the same as mine. However, there are going to be important things you need to learn that regardless of, of your journey, these are, these are important uh, nuggets that you're going to use to be successful. And you know, one thing I noticed with a lot of them is they all want to be big. They all want to be huge artists. They all want to be, you know, like Damien Hirst or Jeff Koons. You know, they want to be the new Basquiat. Mm. <laughs> Slow down. That is great. <laughs> However, do you want to blossom? Because another thing is every plant, every flower blossoms differently, mm -hmm. right? And do you want to blossom just for a day or two? in the sense of a plant blossom for a day or two in your career it could be one or two years or do you want to blossom for a longer period of time you know the flower that is there regardless you know if you look at my garden right now those flowers have been there since uh, the, the 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 red ones they've been there since uh april Wow. And we're now October and it's freezing outside. They're still there. The rest of them, dead. <laughs> right? You know, um, the question is, which one do you want to be? Right? Um, you, you know, you might not be the next Jeff Koons, but you might be. However, the mindset is not that that's what you want to start demanding right now. You want to put into place the basic things you need right now. You don't have a website, but you want to be Jeff Koons. So which one are you doing? You put a carrot before, you put a carrot before the horse. Yeah. Right? Um... Uh, the carriage before the horse, sorry. So it's, uh, you know, it's part of those things. So success, you will be successful, but you got to put in the hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to put in the time. You got to stand in front of the canvas. So you got, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to put in the work. Now, people say, you know, got to, you know, you, you have to, you know, work, work smart, not work hard. However you want to work, you got to work. <laughs> you got to put it in. Work is involved. Right? There's no skipping step. That's right. And I, I know a lot of people that, that listen to a lot of talks and people say, oh, you know, you, you should not be sleeping. You should be awake. No, I actually believe that you need to sleep. You know, you need rest because yeah. if you don't, <laughs> you would die. You know, that's how, that's how diseases and illnesses arise. Yeah, it's from lack. Sense. That's right. From lack of sleep, you need to rest. However, I think what's more important, you need to stop um, wasting time, doing time, wasting things, right, right? So, you know, instead of you, instead of you being on, on, on Facebook or YouTube or any of these things, except you're doing some research that has to do with the work, don't waste your time. 
Yeah. Sure, you can want to take a break now and then. Take a break, but don't spend two hours watching TikTok. <laughs> it does nothing for you. Nothing. Right? So these are all the little things that, you know, um, you know, that come out. And so you know, with, that, with that collection, I created it thinking, oh, this is where the money is, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm thinking about money. I'm not thinking about being creative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you, I learned a lesson from it yeah. that that doesn't, you know, creating something money doesn't necessarily equal money. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's the lesson. So you need to be creative. You got to free your mind. Let the mind go on the way. And if I continued that and kept on forcing that, that you know, the, the idea of the head wraps would never have come up. No. Never have come you're up. Chasing, you're chasing something else. Yeah, exactly. 